Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. Hello fellow teachers of SMKSP or to be specific fellow English teachers of SMKSP. I'm Umi and it's been a long time since we talked to each other or even see each other or any physical encounters with each other or having any physical encounters with each other but that's all right and hopefully all of you are doing fine so today i'll be showing you sharing with you my way on creating my online lesson so as you all know we've been going on about this online lesson for so long and sometimes it can be very boring but sometimes it's also interesting for example this little um slight thing i have here okay so i'll just start um, my presentation right away okay so um firstly i'll be showing you uh, the three things or three items that i always use whenever i want to record my lesson and these three are very important to me because it basically helped me combining doing everything related to my lesson on that day okay all right so there are three different things like i've mentioned so first thing first is the powerpoint or keynote so i'm using macbook pro um so keynote is actually the powerpoint in macbook so uh, these two are quite similar but in terms of functionality powerpoint is just a lot easier so i'll present my materials which i took from the teacher's guidebook and i insert it in the powerpoint or keynote i'll be showing you more about this in the next slides all right, secondly, QuickTime Player. This is the software that's already installed in the MacBook when, when you bought it. So it has the software, QuickTime Player, where you can use it to screen record. And apart from that, you can also record yourself by recording the screen that you're using, that you're teaching. Okay, so thirdly, YouTube. So you can start your own YouTube channel and then you upload your videos there. It's free and it's very beneficial because students can basically access the uh, teaching videos whenever they want or whenever they can of course one video can it is only used for one lesson so they should be able to catch up the lesson if they can't on the first day okay so they have the entire week it's not the entire year all right all right so let's check out each of these things one by one number one let's go to powerpoint or the keynote so these softwares i use to present my materials which i took from the teacher's guidebook like i've mentioned and also these two are very easy to use and of course it helps you to organize your ideas better and also another interesting feature about this is you can get different themes online for example from slides go okay let's check out the difference between these two i'll first show you the keynote because i don't quite fond of it because I'm not quite fond of it. Okay, so this is a keynote. Um, as you can see, this theme is downloaded from the website which I told you just now, the Slides Go, and you can do quite a lot of stuff with it. This was uh, this is my first lesson with the kids, so um, it's not very nice, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. So you can edit everything that you see here. You can even edit the planets that you see around here. But I'm just going to show you the very simple steps on editing this part. Okay, welcome to our first English lesson. First of all, you can format this, um, this part. You can bring it to the front, send it to the back. You can align it. You can change its size and its position. And you can also rotate it, which I'm not going to do now. But okay, I'll show it to you later. Okay, so that's that for the rotation and then as for the style you can also also change the style for example you want it to be like this or this or even this or this okay you can edit them all you can even change the feel of your um box if you want to you can change the border okay uh, there are different types of borders included here you can choose like the chalkboard or this one the line I'm not sure what it's called or this one you can also change its color okay if you don't want to keep all the changes just click on the button command and Z okay so you can just go back to your first original slide all right next we can also change the style of the text okay here you can change the size or the look 
of the, your title and so on, okay? And then you can also change the font where they want it to be noteworthy. I want it to be a little bit of um, American typewriter. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also change it to um, chalkboard. Hmm. Or you can also change it to um, marker felt. Okay, and again, if you don't want to keep it, just click on command, not click on, press the button. Command um, Z. If you are not using a MacBook, you can also use this function by clicking on, I mean, pressing on the button Control Z. Okay. All right. And that's that. You can change its position um, to um, bold items or underline. Huh. All right. So that's that for Keynote. It's not as fun, I'd say. It's not as fun as. PowerPoint because um, while well, Keynote changes your font, for example, you downloaded a theme from Slidespo and then suddenly the font that you downloaded is not there, changed to Arial or whatever, so not attractive. But when you use PowerPoint, it will give you the original font that you've downloaded or come that came together with the theme that you don't you've downloaded. Okay, for example, this one, I downloaded this thing because I think it's so colorful and has this retro um, features with it. And I just love all the little sparkling star or whatever. Okay, so with um, PowerPoint, it will keep the original font and it will help you to um, present in a cuter or more attractive way. Okay, mm -hmm. like this one. This was the 25th week of lesson for Form 2, which I um, did with them. You can also end it with a thank you note at the back. So the benefit of using uh, PowerPoint is greater because you can basically choose if you want to add more slides and it will give you all the different options that the theme offer and it's easier to edit here too because if you go to keynote it's actually quite difficult to edit of course you have the toolbars here you can go to media it, it can be difficult can be easy well it depends on which function you want to use it for okay but i personally think that powerpoint is a lot easier no matter where um, no matter where if you use it on your um macbook or not a macbook powerpoint is easier okay so let's go back to our slide Right, and of course I want to show you the website Slidespo because it's so interesting. Okay, alright, so Slidespo. This is the user interface. This is the first thing that you'll see when you go to this website. And you can type the um, theme that you want to go with. For example, I want to go with floral today because I feel so floral. <laughs> Okay, they offer templates not only in the uh, for the PowerPoint. You can also create uh, invitation cards, um, Instagram stories, or anything that you can think of here. So there are a lot of different options. But if you want to use it for free, you only need to log in with your account, whether it be your Facebook or Google account, or your um, Apple account, Apple ID. Okay, but. If we're using it for free, we can't download any of this with the premium in the premium package. We can only download the simple one. <laughs> okay, for example, this one. Okay, the slides which doesn't have the premium symbol on the left top corner are downloadable. Mm -hmm. Like me, I don't want to pay for it, so I just use the free version. Okay, but seriously, even though it's free, they offer quite a great amount of um, themes. I'm telling you, go ahead and have a look at it. You are going to have fun creating a lesson. So that is Slides Go. Of course, there are other um, websites which offers an even greater features. I don't know, but I always go to Slides Go whenever I want to download a new theme for my slides. All right, and that's it for PowerPoint and Keynote. Let's go to the next one. We have the QuickTime Player. So QuickTime Player 
is only available for MacBook or an Apple product. I mean, maybe MacBook, not Apple product, because you can't have a QuickTime player on Apple Watch, right? So, uh, QuickTime player is the one that I, it's the software that I use to record my lesson once I've completed the presentation on my PowerPoint or Keynote. So, if you want to record um, your screen, it's very simple. You can try this step. Number one, open up the software here. So it will pop up on your screen. Don't click on anything. <laughs> go to file. Okay, go to file and then you can start the new screen recording. Okay, so right now I am recording my screen so I can't click on this or else everything is going to be vanished. Okay, if if you want to record yourself while recording your screen, you can click on the new movie recording first and then click on new screen recording okay all right i'm not going to click any of them because i don't want to risk losing this current recording that i have so if you want to record yourself you can click on the new movie recording and you can resize the tab okay from being a big old size to a quite a small one so you can place it on the side okay while teaching your kids here okay apart from that you can also use shortcuts like the command z for quicktime player if you want to record a if you want to screen record or anything you can just click on shift command 5 so this little pop-up is going to pop up <laughs> okay so you can record uh, the whole screen like this one <coughs> You can record a selected screen, so you can select which part of your uh, desktop that you want to record. You can also take some screenshots of your um, desktop, the full one or the selected area or selected window, and then just click on the this, this little button here. Okay, that's for Command Shift 5, but mm -hmm. if you press on Command Shift 3, okay, it will instantly screenshot the whole screen for you and it will keep it in, uh, at your desktop for better or easier access, okay? All right, so that's that for QuickTime Player. And then let's go to the last part, the YouTube. Okay, I use this medium to upload my lessons. So when I say lessons, I really meant it because I've been uploading my lessons since the first, since the first MCO, since the first time we started the online lesson thingy because they are so easy to use and of course free no one wants to pay that much money <laughs> that will not me at least and then you can also control the viewers of your videos for example once you've uploaded your video of course there are several things that you're going to have to click for example whether you want your video to be uploaded right away or later and stuff etc but one of the main feature is that you can choose to um, who you want to share videos, your videos with. For example, you want it to be private. Only for your own viewing, you can click on the private option. You want it to be public, so you'll get more views. It means more people will be able to um, access your video. You can click on the option here. And also, you can go with the unlisted option. For unlisted, um, only those with the link of the video can access the video, okay? And also, the latest feature of YouTube is probably earlier this year where you can edit your video on YouTube Studio. When I say edit, it's so um, cool <laughs> because you can basically uh, blur any parts you want to blur out. Of course, you can use other softwares or other applications on our phone, but really um, YouTube Studio has made it even easier by enabling um, the edit button on YouTube Studio itself. So I will show you the YouTube channel of mine. Okay, first of all, you want to go to YouTube. So this is the user interface. This is what you will see on your YouTube. This is not your channel. This is just your interface. These are the recommendations of things that they um, think that you might be interested in or here are the subscriptions, the channels that you're subscribed to. 
okay you can also view the library or history of videos right here i'm not going to show you each and every one of these features but i'll show you this part okay if you click on your image remember there are two different images here number one is uh, your google chrome account and the other one is your youtube account so you want to click on the youtube account and go to your channel of course you can change also the look of your youtube channel i use the dark theme because i prefer that okay if you click on your channel you'll see your videos here okay if you want it to be clearer you can check it out here so these are all the lessons i've uploaded over the past year <laughs> okay or during my study all right so yes you can check it out you can also create a playlist you can go to channels that you're subscribed to you can create a discussion and you can share about yourself here okay if you go to your channel content you will see this so this is actually youtube studio it's very easy um, once you've logged in or once you've created your youtube channel you can just go ahead to google and type youtube studio and this will bring you to here okay so first of all i'll show you the dashboard which is your user interface so this is what you'll see first thing first before and then you can go ahead to your content so this is your content section where you'll see all of the videos you've uploaded the visibility is uh, like i've mentioned earlier where they want it to be private unlisted or public so here you can actually delete your video if you don't want it to be there anymore but if you want it to keep it to yourself just click on the oh my god the um unlisted version okay i wanted to show you one video where was it okay here it is Remember, okay. So, for example, I want to edit this video. What I can do is, I can go, I can just click on it and it'll bring me to this page. Okay, so once you're here, you can edit um, your video. So, they want to edit the title. This is how people are going to find your video in case uh, they forgot they don't have the link, they can just type the title. Okay. And then the description is where you can put all the details about your um, video. Okay, for example, I want to inform my kids um, about the page that they'll be referring to for this week. So I'll just type it in the description here. Page 28, okay? Uh, so you can just put it there and you can save it once you're done with it. Then, of course, if you go lower, you can see more options. For example, you can upload your own thumbnail, but I just use the available thumbnail for this one because it's easier and also you can include it into your playlist or you can create a playlist for your channel and um, you can also let children watch a video if you feel like they're the only group of people you want to share a video with but if you feel like it's free for everybody to watch for people of different ages you can just go ahead and click on the no it's not made for kids <laughs> but basically yeah kids won't be able to access this video if you click on this option so just go to yes uh -huh. okay so if you go to analytics you can see this cat lane okay you can see how many people have seen this video how many people have watched it and how long did they watch it for uh, did any of your subscribers watch it okay and then you can also go to editor okay for editor this is the part that i mentioned earlier where YouTube Studio have allowed us to um, edit our videos here and I find it's very interesting so I love this part blur parts of your video because sometimes we uploaded a content with um, our address or something that's quite personal something that just don't want to be included in the video so we can just blur it out okay you can also include an audio if you want to put a background music you can just add a track um, you can blur it out. Uh, you can also add an end screen. Okay. All right. So that's that for the editing section of your video. Okay. These are basically the tabs I've, which I've opened to make it easier for us to access. <laughs> I mean, for me to access to be specific. So these are the videos which I've done in the past or currently doing. Uh, 
for my kids. All right, next, let's go back to our this one. Okay, so those are everything that I used for my lesson. If you've completed everything, you can check out the slides you've done in the folder you've created. It's basically about the same as your own personal laptop. It's just that I like it better because it's faster. Maybe I just don't know how to use the previous one, but this is so much fun. And there's no lagging or whatever. It's not lagging. <laughs> okay. So yes, here are the lessons which I've done with my Form 1 students and my, my Form 2. And there was once I taught the Form 3 students. I also have it here. Okay, and that is it for my sharing. I hope that it'll help um, you in creating your own content or if you're contemplating getting a MacBook, please get it right away if you feel like it. Okay, and thank you everyone. Don't forget to be her in your life, okay? And I'd love to <coughs> personally thank each and every one of you for all the memories created and all the knowledge which you've shared with me. I highly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart and it hasn't been easy for me to start my career as a teacher so far away from my family but this school is not um, as hard as I thought it would be so thank you everyone and of course one more thing um, before I go if you are not using MacBook you can also opt for other screen recorder for your computer you just go ahead to Google and type screen recording software and it will give you so many different options. Just be careful, don't um, fall into any agreement which you wouldn't agree with at the end of the day. Okay, thank you everyone for watching my video and see you when I see you. Bye. <laughs> oh, little pet.